skin, peak bandage. Hi guys, my name is Jess and I'm here today because I wanted to talk to you about the three key things that I think that you need in your skincare routine, especially if you have acne prone skin, you have dry skin. I think that when we use a lot of topical treatments on our skin, we can often get those horrible little flaky dry patches. So today I wanna to talk about what you can do about that and my top three products that I think should really be in your skincare routine. Okay, so I'm gonna go over these three things in kind of an order, and I wanna start with exfoliants. So I think it's really important you have some kind of exfoliator in your skincare routine, and it doesn't really matter if you've got dry skin or not, if you've got really oily skin, it doesn't matter. You still need some kind of an exfoliator as part of your routine, just to help uh, renew the skin and make sure that everything's turning over nice and smoothly and to minimize the impact of having like, bacteria and dirt and all this fun stuff on your skin especially if you wear makeup you want to have a nice smooth canvas to work with so let's talk about that now if you do have active acne you have to be careful with your exfoliation and this is something that I don't think too many people really talk about oftentimes people just reach for something like this and this is okay. I mean, this is quite a large <laughs> brush head. You can get these exfoliation brushes with much smaller heads on them. You can get the little ones that you just use manually on your skin. And like, they're okay, they'll do the job. But there's a little problem. If you've got active acne, then you don't want to cause aggravation. You don't want to cause more inflammation of your skin and unfortunately, these brushes can do that. So, what do you do? I think that you should either use a weekly mask on your skin. This is one that I used quite a bit. It was the Problem Skin Mask by Reviver Labs. You can get that on iHerb. And I think if you use like a weekly mask, it's just once a week, you're putting a mask on and you're taking it off with a soft cloth and that minimizes the chance of aggravation and rubbing your skin. You don't wanna rub your skin too much. Alternatively, hopefully you guys know, Banish have their own little mask and this one here, the Pumpkin Enzyme Mask, I've talked about this a million and one times. It is my favorite product. The reason why I like this is because it's a mask, it will exfoliate your skin, but it does it in a non-physical way. And it uses that um, it uses AHAs in here to get rid of dead skin cells and dry skin and renew your beautiful face. So that's what I recommend. If you're gonna go for Banish, go for that pumpkin enzyme mask. It's a winner. Next thing that I wanna talk about that's kind of in the routine is oils. Now, if you have oily skin, you might feel a little bit freaked out at the prospect of putting more oil on your face. And let's be real, sometimes this just does not work for everybody. I'm gonna put it out there into the world. You can't always fight oil with oil. It doesn't necessarily work but some oils can be really beneficial for people's skin. And especially if you do have dry, flaky parts of your skin, if you're using a treatment and you wanna kind of make sure that your skin is nice and moisturized, then an oil is the way to go. Also, very good for hyperpigmentation and scarring. So, you know, double whammy, but you need to be careful what kind of oils that you use. For example, lavender oil, this is a general no-no. A lot of people actually break out quite significantly from lavender oil. And also, what's the other one? Oh, coconut oil. Coconut oil, soz, it can actually break people out in a very big way. Again, some people are in love with that stuff, but for me, I kind of want to stay clear just because I'm not too sure what it would do to my skin and I don't want to take the chance. So, avoid lavender oil, avoid coconut oil, Avoid essential oils because there is that possibility that it can break you out. So what the heck do you use instead? Okay, there are a few different ones on the market. For me, I always tend to go back to 
rose hip oil. It's awesome. You guys get on that rose hip oil bandwagon. It is so, so worth it. It might take maybe two months to kind of really start to see results, but stick with it. It's amazing. In Australia, there's another company called Dewey and Bay that do their own little oil here. And you might find other independent companies that do fantastic oils that you would love to maybe give them a go. Yeah, check them out. This one here by Dewey and Bay, their Raw Glow. It is their Nourishing Face Serum. So you might want to suss that out if you're in the market for a new oil. They do international shipping. Also, Fancy that, Banish have their own oils. So you can go for the Banish oil. This, I think it's like the old packaging and the new packaging here. And this is a vitamin C. Now I actually, I was very lucky today. I went to a meeting today of a few women in business and I got to have a great talk to a woman who is in the beauty industry and she has uh, lots of different clinics and beauty clinics here on the Gold Coast and she was talking about vitamin C and said that's the way to go because I was talking about derma rolling I said what do you think about derma rolling and vitamin C and she's like we do that in our clinic we recommend it it works it's amazing so get on the vitamin C bandwagon too. You gotta get on this bandwagon and this one too, okay? Get on your oils. All right, I think those are the main oils. So the last product that I think should definitely be in your routine is a moisturizer. Moisturizers, again, even if you've got really oily skin, a moisturizer is the way to go. You've gotta use it every single day, preferably twice a day, just like you brush your teeth twice a day, Put your moisturizer on twice a day. So it's probably best if you use a moisturizer just after you hop out of the shower because all of your pores are nice and open and ready to accept whatever treatments that you're putting on it. So yeah, pop on your moisturizer after a shower. And the kinds of moisturizers that I like to go for are, well, depends on the time of day. Let me explain. So if it's in the morning, then I'm most likely going to be putting my face on, my makeup on. So I want to go for a gel based moisturizer. And I'm just putting this one as an example. I use the Curel Sebum Trouble Care Moisture Gel. Yeah, go for a gel moisturizer. Just because they sink into the skin a lot quicker, a lot easier. And you're going to notice a difference with your makeup if you do wear makeup. Not everybody does, and that's okay. But yeah, go for a gel-based moisturizer, especially if you do have acne-prone skin. And then in the evening, use something that it kind of doesn't matter if nobody sees you. <laughs> so I like to use more thicker moisturizers in the evening that will really help to penetrate my skin, keep it hydrated, keep those flakes away, and help with my wrinkles because God, I need to worry about them now too. Um, and I'm just going for a calendula cream. This one is pretty basic. It's okay if your moisturizers and all of your products are basic. You don't need fancy stuff. Isn't that amazing? We don't actually need all of those fancy creams and potions, but this one here is a calendula cream. You could possibly even pick this up in your baby aisle of your local supermarket. This one I got from a discount chemist and it's just the EcoSooth brand. Yeah, I love it. It's so super, super moisturizing, really good for my skin. It helps to soothe my skin. So if you're somebody who has active acne and it's a, it's a little bit inflamed, it's kind of red and sore, then try using a calendula cream in the evening and yeah, you're going to see results guys. I was, I was kind of taken aback. <laughs> I'm like, this thing isn't going to work. Mm. It works, it's amazing, and I love it. Those are the top three things that I think should be in your skincare routines. Some kind of an exfoliator, some kind of an oil, and a moisturizer. And it might be kind of weird that I'm telling you to like hydrate your skin this much, but guess what? Sometimes acne is actually a result of a lack of hydration. It's actually due to dehydration. So. Let's counteract that. Have a go, see what you think. And if you have any other product suggestions or if there's a different thing that you think should really be part of a skincare routine, 
leave it for me down below. I look forward to reading your replies and I look forward to seeing you all next time. So have a fantastic rest of the day, everybody, and see you later. Bye. <laughs>